Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about capillary fragility test, which is one of the tests for hemostasis. As discussed in the previous video, laboratory evaluation of hemostasis may be divided according to the primary hemostasis or the secondary hemostasis steps. Capillary fragility test, which will be discussed in this video, is under the primary hemostasis. Capillary fragility test, or CFT, is known by other names like the tourniquet test, the tourniquet capillary resistance test, and the HESS test. There are three different methods for testing CFT. We have the Quix test, the Rumpel lead method, and the Gothlin's test. The Rumpel lead method is named after Theodore Rumpel and Carl Stockbridge lead. The Gothlin's test is performed with both arms inflated at 35 millimeter mercury for 15 minutes. For the experiments that we will be doing in the laboratory, we will perform both the Quix test and the Rumpel lead method. Materials needed for these experiments would be a sphygmomanometer and a stethoscope. CFT has the following principle. It measures if the capillaries are able to resist the pressure that is given by the tourniquet, or in our experiment, we will be using a blood pressure apparatus. This means that this test is able to measure if the capillaries can remain stable under increased pressure or in conditions where there is a decrease in oxygen. Therefore, CFT is a crude measurement of capillary fragility. These are the following steps for the QUICKS method. First is to examine the forearm for any existing petechiae. Petechiae are minute hemorrhages under the skin that appear as small or red dots or spots. These would be the results that we will be looking for after the procedure. So it should be noted if they are already present before the procedure, so they will not be counted. After examining for any petechiae, take the blood pressure of the patient. For example, we have obtained a blood pressure of 100 over 70. We now have to compute for the pressure in between the systolic and the diastolic. We add 170 and divide it by 2, and we have 85 millimeter mercury. This is what we will use for the next step. When we inflate the BP cuff, we have to maintain the pressure that we have obtained. So this would be 85 millimeter mercury, and we have to sustain this for five minutes. For the safety of the patient, the blood pressure that should be used in this step should not exceed 100 millimeter mercury. For the next step, after five minutes, we remove the BP cuff and wait for 5 to 10 minutes. After 10 minutes of waiting, we now examine the forearm, the hands, and the fingers for the appearance of the petechiae. After counting the petechiae present after the procedure, we can now proceed with the grading and the interpretation of the test. If 11 to 20 petechiae are present, a grade of 1 plus is given with a description of a few on the anterior arm. If 21 to 40 petechiae are counted, a grade of 2 plus is given. If 41 to 50 petechiae are counted, a grade of 3 plus is given. And if there are 51 and above petechiae present, the highest grade that can be given to a patient is 4 plus. Counts less than and equal to 10 would be normal. 11 to 20 will give an interpretation of equivocal, while 2 plus to 4 plus would give an abnormal result. Next is the Rumpel lead method. Now the grading, the procedure, and the interpretation is exactly the same as the Quick's test, but with the following differences. First is that the blood pressure is not taken before the procedure because a standard pressure is maintained at 100 millimeter mercury. This means that the maintained pressure is not dependent on the computation of the blood pressure. 
Abnormal results may be caused by different conditions. Examples of these conditions would be a defect in the supporting tissue like in senile purpura. Defects in the endothelial integrity will also give an increase in CFT. Platelets also play a function in the abnormality of the CFT either in number or in function. Example would be in thrombocytopenia. Fibrinogen would also play a role in an increase in the CFT if there is a decrease in concentration like in hypofibrinogenemia. Nowadays, CFT is no longer used for routine hemostasis screening because of its varying sensitivity and specificity. Also, CFT could not be repeated on the same area for a number of seven days. Thrombocytopenia, as mentioned earlier, is a decrease in the number of platelets. There are several interfering factors that are associated with CFT, and these are pre- and post-menstrual uh, conditions and if the skin is damaged by the sun. The appearance of a petechiae upon vasoconstriction after the test is known as the rumple lead phenomenon or the rumple lead sign. And lastly, CFT was once declared by the WHO as a requisite for the diagnosis of dengue fever. And that ends our capillary fragility test video. Make sure to watch the other hemostasis test videos. Thank you very much for watching.